as you said, I wrote the book back in 2018, and I started to think about what could be a future potential scenario of the economy. Um, I see the economy as the operating system of our society. Um, if you talk about a social, um, ecological market economy, it becomes social if, if the economy is running and there is something to divide and share and, and to invest. And I think also the challenges in terms of ecology is basically when the economy and ecology become synergetic. So I started to think about, you know, what are the implications of exponential technologies, mainly coming from a quantum background. Um, I've been curious about quantum tech and I've invested in quantum tech in the past. And um, I saw kind of sort of the development of AI um, evolving into that um, exponential speed of change that we are today seeing on an operating level and also in the economy in general. And I, I thought about, you know, what would be the future of the economy uh, as in comparison to a lot of the narratives that were talked about, about sustainability to reduce, to limit, to uh, talk about it as a crisis and to have that negative flair on um, how to look at the economy. Um, so I went back and I, I, I realized that a lot of um, um, the theoretical frameworks of quantum physics was also based on a lot of inspiration from Buddhism and Eastern philosophy. Um, it was also about the relationship to us as human beings. We are also quantum entities, right? So we are part of the most fundamental definition that we have for modern physics, which is quantum theory or quantum mechanic. And um, I saw that there are a lot of similarities to how we operate. So a human being is not, at least if we look at it from a non-physical standpoint, predictable uh, in everything we do. So there is a dynamic to it. And also we tend to talk about the economy in terms of finite structures like winning and losing, uh, absolute results. And we talk about knowledge and, and the absolutism, I think is a big challenge for today's world. So I took a more dynamic view of things. And I, I said, of course, yeah, we have to reduce our consumption. Uh, I think, you know, at least from a Western standpoint, there is a lot to do in that field still in terms of a conscious um, or a better understanding, must I say, of the challenges that are ahead. And uh, obviously there is something next to reduce, which is called reuse, um, uh, building a circular economy or even looking at regenerative approaches. And uh, I think that is something that has become the narrative that it has to become sustainable and we, we haven't really defined sustainability. I mean, from a physical standpoint, based on entropy, I think, you know, we could say that uh, the universe itself is not sustainable at the end of the day, but uh, we want to be around a couple of years still. So I think there are a lot of things that we can do. But I think, you know, from an economical standpoint, at the end of the day, what we refer to today as sustainability is basically efficiency of uh, the usage of resources. So that means that if you want to make money in the future, you have to be efficient. And I think that uh, the whole, you know, thinking about circular economies and also the regenerative approaches that we suck plastic out of the ocean or, you know, have a big vacuum cleaner that, that cleans up the CO2 and you make money out of carbon um, capturing. Those are things that basically are, are new business models. But at, at the core, I think people, uh, companies that, um, you know, have to, they have to be efficient with the resources. It's EBIT, it's making money. So reduce, yes, reuse, yes. But I think the core to me was to rethink how we do the economy. We, you know, have decided to make categories. We thought about impact investment and social business, but the challenge is capitalism at its core. So if capitalism is not including the human being or the mensch and the planet, the resources that we have, then it's obviously a finite model. So how can we think about, you know, capitalism and the business um, as something potential, a potentiality of potential futures? How can we think about, you know, economy and leadership and management as something infinite? So I um, read this book from a theologist back in the 80s called Finite and Infinite Games. And I started to relate that uh, physical view of the capitalism and the business world, th what I call the art of being right, how to optimize, how to maximize zeros and ones, your opinion, my opinion, black and white, everything is optimized to one finite solution. And I started to think about it in an infinite terms. And I saw many similarities also to my understanding of quantum theory. And there are many things that we can get into how that relates, but mostly it was about the potential of quantum technologies in relationship to us uh, humble individuals, you know, the mentally human being. And that's what I started to, to reflect on a new way of 
upgrading capitalism to a more humane capitalism. And, and that was the core of the quantum economy. Uh, later, the World Economic Forum has also adapted the quantum economy, but they see it only from a technical standpoint. And, and I'm a strong believer of technology. I'm a, you know, I would say a tech, technology utopianist. I think um, the things that we have to do is to believe in progress in technology. I'm a strong believer in scientific optimism and, and progress in technology. But I'm also a strong believer in growth. And when I say growth, I talk about human growth and how we as human beings through education can get a better understanding of the problems. So um, the quantum economy is an infinite model where I believe in infinite progress, that infinite progress is possible. And instead of having finite solutions, I talk about creating better problems. So it's all about positive progress for humanity. And that I want to bake into um, how we do business and the capitalistic model in general, because I think capitalism is a working model. Um, it has given us, you know, a lot more peace, a um, lot more prosperity, um, you know, less people die in wars, um, the, the poverty rate has gone down, but it seems to be the way we interpreted it back in the 70s with, um, you know, famous German um, saying the prosperity for all was basically um, a optimization game that seems to have some limits. So now it's time you know, to think about it in, in infinite terms and to upgrade capitalism. And um, even Dalai Lama um, quoted and said, you know, capitalism is the working model, but it needs compassion. So I think that educational part of including the mensch moving from a knowledge society to a society of understanding is on the one side, the core of the, of the uh, quantum economy. And on the other side, obviously, it's a belief that technologies in future will be able to help us and do a lot more things to help us to strive and also to uh, tackle some of the challenges ahead. Uh, one is obviously energy. And I think um, within the next 10 to 15 years, as we have seen now with uh, knowledge and intelligence that the marginal cost, you know, plunges towards zero and become democratized. I think also through technology, we can create a world uh, if we invest in these technologies um, that where we can have energy, um, marginal cost of energy also move towards zero and, and basically um, enable um, poor regions and, and challenges that and unlock the potential of technology to serve humanity as a whole and come up with completely new solutions of how to tackle climate, how to tackle, you know, the geopolitical tension, how to tackle, um, you know, the prosperity for regions that today live in these regions where they strive towards the same level of, um, of uh, you know, prosperity that the Western affluent regions have made. So that is the vision of the quantum economy. We have set up a small global initiative, um, the quantumeconomy.com, where we focus on quantum goods and services, basically, you know, the tangible business models within the quantum economy. Um, one part is what we call quantum organizations, how leadership and organizational structures will be in the future with decentralization and you know, the po possibilities of technology and how we work with technology in the future, also with AI. And um, the third one is basically uh, what we call quantum human. So quantum human is uh, an initiative that is also detached from the quantum economy where we look at the relationship between technology and um, human beings in future. How do we, uh, what will happen if we merge? We look at various scenarios um, in terms of what is identity, what is consciousness, and we are building an institution um, to do research and publications in that field. And the fourth one is um, the whole economic model um, where we talk about quantum economics, money, um, and how that uh, exchange and, and how the economic systems will be in future. So there are four focus areas, and we have also started to tap into a separate project with, which uh, we uh, look at from a decentralized science perspective, where we use um, various um, you know um, approaches that has been used today in tokenomics, and to look at you know how can we democratize and decentralize scientific approaches to 
get more people involved um, as the next way will obviously be the challenge to have people work within the field of quantum without having a quantum uh, physics degree um, and, and to build business models and also structures and solutions on top of uh, these complex underlying um, fundamental understandings of physics. So, um, you know, you have hardware, software, you have the interfaces. There are a lot of things to do. And, and how can we start now to educate people how to exploit the potentials of that to create a better future? So the quantum economy is a humane capitalism built on the belief that we don't, you know, solve problems. We work and strive for better problems. Uh, and my underlying um, belief is that, you know, human beings want to be positive and I, I want to take a positive approach because I think the incentives for change are much stronger than just solely limiting and regulating and screaming crisis. So I'm a, I'm a positivist um, per choice. I choose optimism uh, and I choose hard work. So I, I think, you know, we, if we really put our effort into working hard and trying to figure these things out, I think uh, with a humane um, operating system, a capitalistic model that I call the quantum economy, then I think we can tackle a lot of these challenges. So that's a short um, introduction to, to the quantum economy.